Good morning everyone, and we're back with the second cycling bulletin of October, in which we are going to talk about the rest of the news in the world of cycling from the 1st to the 8th of October. We have the first appearances of Renko Evenepoel with the rainbow jersey, notes of retirements such as Langeveld, Barberi and Nivali, the possible Movistar Repsol agreement for 2023, numerous rumors and confirmations of future Grand Tours and changes in the rules of men's and women's cycling. Remember that you have available in the channel the first edition of this month's cycling bulletin with the market news, Ghana, doping and cyclocross. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you like my content. Let's go with the info. We start this cycling bulletin with a section of individual cyclists and Renko Evenepoel, who received a great mass bath last Sunday at the Grand Place in Brussels. Thousands of fans dressed in red, the color of the leader's jersey of the Vuelta España, gathered in the central square to celebrate Renko's recent successes. The Belgian climbed onto the balcony of the town hall and became the second cyclist in the country's history to be honored in the same square after Eddie Merckx in 1969. In addition, Evenepoel was made an honorary citizen of Dilbeck, his hometown, and two days later he wore his rainbow jersey for the first time in the Vinci Chemai Vinci, also taking part in a symbolic torch passing ceremony with Philippe Gilbert before the race. On the 7th and 8th of October, he celebrated his wedding with an influencer. Quite a few days for Evenepoel. Another piece of news is that Machin, head of UAE and a great talent scout, told Wheeler Fleets that he is supporting Marcos Freire, son of the great Oscar Freire, in the development of his cycling career. Marcos is 16 years old and will compete in juniors in 2023, a category in which he will be supported in equipment by Machin and UAE. We must also comment on some statements made by Steven Kreisbeig. The Dutchman, who has been acting as a super domestic for Roglic and Vingego for a few years, wants to have his own space in the Jumbo leadership for next season. Kreisbeig said his big ambitions for the rest of his career are a podium in the Giro and a stage win in the Tour. It is going to be really difficult for him to be the Giro or Volta leader of a team like Jumbo again, especially with the return of Wilco Kerdeman to the fold. And we finish this section with Uno X rider Torsten Train. The Norwegian was treated at the beginning of July for testicular cancer, which was discovered during a doping control. After returning to competition in mid-August at the Baltic Chain Tour, Train achieved a great feat by finishing 7th overall at the Tour of Croatia, quite a recovery in less than 3 months. Let's go now with the retirements, and we'll start with the new ones. Sebastian Langeveld announced on Instagram that the Paris Tours was his last race at the age of 37 and after more than 15 years as a professional, in which we must highlight his victory in the Oplop Head New West Blood in 2011 against Juan Antonio Flecha. Langeveld will become a sport director at EF Education Easy Post, his current team. Another retiree is the Estonian Tanil Kangard at the age of 35, a great domestic in the mountains in his years at Astana, who you may remember for his key role in Vincenzo Nivali's victory in the 2016 Giro. And also Steve Chanel, who will retire on the 28th of February at the age of 39 after a few seasons in which he focused on his favorite discipline, cyclocross. It's time to talk about the retirements of two of the best cyclists of the 21st century, Alejandro Valverde and Vincenzo Nivali. In Lombardia was the last race of their sporting careers and the peloton and the cycling world recognized their status as legends. Nivali and Valverde made their way to the start in Bergamo and before taking up the front positions, the spectators and the rest of the peloton gave them a guard of honor. Along the route, the spectators' cheers were constant throughout the race. We also saw, on the finishing straight, a large flag of the Región de Murcia, where Valverde is from, with Acho written on it, an expression from Murcia. A pity that the final result didn't satisfy any of the two, as Valverde, who felt capable of winning, had to settle for sixth place by winning the sprint of the third group, while Nibali was left behind in Sibiglio and finished in 24th position, recognizing that to win this race you have to be 100% fit. We also saw Jan Ulrich greeting Valverde and Nibali, but in Lombardia was also the last race for Tanel Kangert and Mikel Nieve. The Estonian dropped out and the Spanish climber had very bad luck and broke his collarbone after a nasty crash, the worst way to finish a professional career. And as for the long announced retirement of Iljo Kaise, celebrated pistar and historic member of Quickstep since 2010, 
the Belgian will have a farewell event, Merci Iljo, in which an Omnium race will be held at the Quipke Velodrome in Ghent, the 24th of November. Two teams will take part, Team International and Team Belgian, and several riders such as Cavendish, Viviani, Terpstra or Morku will attend. In addition, Kaise already participated in his last two races, the Rick van Stenbergen Memorial Campaign Classic and the Vinci Gemai Vinci in which Evenepoel crossed the finish line with him in gratitude for all the help given and experience transmitted over the years. And among the women, Van Vleuten, after commenting last week that she was thinking about it, finally assured in the interviews before the women's Tour de Romandie that 2023 will be her last season, that she has no doubts about it. And we finish with the retirement of Kylie Waterhouse, who after four years with Multum Accountants and Lotus Dal Ladies, will make a 180 degree turn in her professional career by joining the Dutch airline KLM. We begin now the team section with a rumor that, if confirmed, would be a great boost for Movistar. Back in June, there was an alliance between Repsol and Telefonica, the company of which Movistar is part of, in the field of photovoltaic self-consumption with the launch of a joint company called Solar 360. And now, according to Onda Zero, Unzu's wish has materialized with the entry of Repsol as a new sponsor alongside Movistar. This union would lead to the doubling of the current budget to 34 million in the range of Jumbo or UAE, a top three budget in the World Tour, just behind Ineos. This new free season has been defined as transitional, and the most important signing will be Fernando Gaviria. The big bet, the big leap for the team, would come in 2024 with the desired incorporation of Carlos Rodriguez and some other top-level riders. Of course, according to Jorge Calabres, this rumor would be false and Ripsol would not be the sponsor that Abarca Sports, Unzu's company, is looking for. In addition to this, it is confirmed that after his retirement, Alejandro Valverde will remain part of the Movistar family as ambassador and advisor to the team and the young guns for 2023. Let's go now with the sports directors and we start with José Fernández Machín, who announced that from next year he will see his role reduced at UAE Team Emirates, ceasing to act as a sports director. This will free him from some of the tasks that generate a huge workload, such as the preparation and planning of the racing calendar, which will be left in hands of capable people like Valdato, Marcato or Hauptmann, while Machín will be able to focus on what he does best scouting the best new talents and future stars of the peloton. We continue now with Gabriel Rush, of whom, as we stated in the Cycling Bulletin 2.1, it was leaked that he would be one of the sports directors who would live in Eos Grenadiers. Well, his departure from the team has already been confirmed as Rush, Norwegian, will join his home team, UNOX. And one who will make his debut in the role of a sports director is Sweden's Magnus Backstedt, former Paris-Roubaix winner, current JCN commentator and father of Eleanor and Zoe Baxter, who joins Canyon Sram Racing, a women's team in the Tone division, from 2023. We continue with the fact that among the eight continental teams that have applied for a Dutch license for the 2023 season, such as Beat Cycling or the development teams of Jumbo and DSM, there is no mention of that supposed new team that the YouTube channel Trutitema was putting together for the next season. And we finish with a new women's team, Rich Lane, whose project was made possible thanks to an anonymous donation of $100,000, as Bridge Lane's funding is a mixture of sponsorship and crowdfunding. We start now the section of races and calendar, and before starting with the numerous of the future Grand Tours, we are going to clarify the dates of the trio of Spanish classics in February, which will be held on consecutive days, the Vuelta Murcia on the 11th, the Clásica de Almería on the 12th, and Jaén Paraíso Interior on the 13th. Let's go now to a couple of changes in the rules. From 2023 onwards, team will be able to change the design of the jersey up to three times each season. I think this is a great idea, especially when announcing a temporary sponsorship or paying tribute to someone. And the other change concerns the 10 trials. For next season, the distance between the team vehicle and the rider will have to be at least 15 meters and not 10 to reduce some of the aerodynamic benefit this generates. Although, let's be honest, this rule was often ignored and nothing happened, and cars will still be able to fit an unlimited number of bikes on the roof racks, which is partly responsible for this aerodynamic gain for cyclists. 
And now, as for the free Grand Tours, we start with the Tour de France 2024. And if in the Cycling Bulletin 2.2 we announced the leak that the first stages would be in Italy, now Prudhomme, in an interview with Rai, was asked if this was true. His answer? The tour has started in several countries, and it would be abnormal if we never had a start in Italy. So he doesn't confirm it, but it's very likely that the 2024 Tour de France will start in Italy. As for next year's edition, more and more rumors continue to swirl. The mythical Puy du Dome, famous for the Pulidor and Ketil duel in 1964, will be the stage 9 summit finish, marking the return to the Tour de France after more than three decades. The peloton's stay in the Auvergne region will continue with a rest day on the 10th of July, with a stage 10 on Tuesday 11th, will take the riders from Vulcania, a volcanic-themed educational park, to Isoire. This will be followed by a stage 11, which will go from Clermont-Ferrand to Moulin. Before these stages and after the start in the Basque Country, the tour will pass through the Pyrenees between the 4th and 6th of July, and the stages in this mountain range could have these starts and finishes, Dax Laruns, Pau Caterets, and Tarbes, which could be the start of an individual time trial. After that, the Tour Caravan will reach Nouvelle Aquitaine. The stage on the 7th of July will finish in Bordeaux, the capital of the region, while Libourne will be the start of stage 8. Remember that the Puyo Dome 1 will be the ninth stage. We also have news of the 2023 Tour de France Feminine, which will start in Clermont-Ferrand in the Massif Central on the 23rd of July, with a couple of stages in Auvergne and will not visit Paris, opting instead to head south to the Pyrenees. We now turn to the Giro 2023, where a little before the route announcement on the 17th of October, we bring what will be, according to La Scarteta Burua and all the information that has been coming out, the most likely profiles of the mountain stages of the next Giro. We have the 3rd and 7th, with finishes in Lago Laceno and Monte Bondone, respectively. The Queen stage will be the 18th, with the Paso Guiao and the Trecima di Lavaredo, the 20th stage, with the time trial up the fearsome Monte Lusari, and the rest, to be honest, do not have the most attractive profiles. Perhaps the best is the 15th, but 17th and 19th are a bit of a disappointment. And we finish the Grand Tours with the Vuelta España to the Free, which, as we already knew, will have two stages in Navarre, Pamplona de Cumberri with a profile identical to that of 2020 with the victory of Marc Soler, and the second, which will start in France and could finish in the sky resort of La Ravelagua after the ascent of Piedra San Martín, Isarbe, La Rau and Laza, with a profile similar to the one you are seeing. And we end this cycling bulletin with women's cycling and the changes that are coming on 2023. The minimum salary for a female cyclist in women's world tour teams will progressively increase from the current €27,500 to €38,000 in 2025, surpassing the minimum salary of the men's pro teams of the second division. Neo professional contracts are introduced, which will mean that teams including several riders under these contracts will be able to have up to 22 riders instead of 20. For races of six or more stages, such as the Giro or Tour, teams will have to choose seven riders and not six. In addition, teams will be able to use a second car in all races if they want to. Women's World Tour teams will be able to have a development team in the second division, the Continental, and we also have a couple of changes that will apply from 2025. The distance covered in women's races in all categories will increase. For example, the Elite World Championship road races will go from 130 or 160 kilometers to 150 or 180 even, while the time trials will go from 20 and 30 kilometers to 30 and 40. And for 25, under 23 riders will have their own World Championship race in both road and time trial. Currently, they are part of the same race as the Elite Woman, which is an aberration. And we end women's cycling with something very emotional. Kirsten Wild, retired since last year, announced that she is auctioning a gift from the UCI, a rainbow jersey with the signatures of all the champions of the 2021 Track World Championships to help fund the rehabilitation of Amy Peters, which is quite expensive. The two Dutch women were teammates in Madison and as of October the 10th is at €1,500, ending on October the 16th. And here ends the second cycling bulletin of October, with the rest of the news of the first week of the month. 
I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.